Hi guys, in this tutorial I wanted to go over a transfer maps tool in Maya, particularly for creating normal maps. So for this lesson I'm going to create a stone path and then we will uh, project normal maps onto a low res geo. So we'll start out with a plane, just a uh, size 2 and uh, 2 by 2 subdivisions. I'm going to place one here. Control D to duplicate. I'm going to hold X, middle mouse drag, and then Shift D a couple times. So we have a couple of stones here like this. I'm going to then combine them. So press the combine button. Uh, clear history, so Shift Alt D. And then I'm going to duplicate. Just place it here. Uh, move it just uh, negative two. And then Shift D, and now it's going to just duplicate these planes over like this. I'm just pressing Shift D a bunch of times. Okay. And now I'm going to select everything, combine. Now I'm not merging anything, I'm just combining. So they're still separate pieces of geometry. They're just combined into one object. Then it's just easier to work with in Maya. I'm going to then cut off the bottom here like this, and then cut off the top we don't need such a long path for this lesson uh, control shift C to center pivot and I have a bunch of different um, hotkeys that I use so if we go into Windows settings preferences hockey editor uh, the hotkeys that I use the most are uh, control shift C it's under menu items uh, modify uh, control shift C for center pivot, control shift F for freeze transformations, and control shift R for reset transformations. And I use this a lot on modeling, so it's pretty useful. I also want to just delete one more row of faces so that when I center my pivot, it's on a grid line. It's just, um, there's no particular reason. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate and save a version. So I'm going to call this target like this just for now now these guys here are all separate so we need to now extrude them and just so I can make some stones so I'm gonna click extrude and just grab direction either or is fine if you get uh, your surface uh, that if your surface looks black all you have to do is go to mesh display and click reverse they'll reverse the normals we'll just push it in the positive direction like this make the stones as square as possible now if you press 3 at this point you can see they're all separate objects. Uh, they're combined into one object but they're separate uh, geometries inside there. Now what we need to do is I want to randomize these. Now there are different ways to do it so I want to show you uh, one way to do it uh, within Maya without using any other tools and that is the transform uh, tool. And it's really easy. You just select your vertices that you want to randomize go into edit mesh and open the options under transform then there's a random option it's going it might be off by default at zero so set it to one hit apply now what you can do you can select the blue direction and drag it and as you do it will randomize uh, the, the uh, directions as it's moving and if you hit apply one more time you can then reverse the direction so you can like push and pull until you get something like this now that works pretty well another way to do this is to use a randomized script and I have a, a randomized script that I've been using for a long time it's free online I'll post a link to it it's called transform type in it's a free script uh, the installation is really easy when you download it there's instructions there how to install it you basically just put it into your scripts folder and then you run a command and if I open this you can see that the command is transform type in and then you can take that command, middle drag it onto your shelf, and I'll create a button. So I'll do that. So in this script, uh, I'm, I can you can turn off rotate and scale, and you have your random range set up. So I'm gonna select the vertices here, and I'm gonna go from I want to go negative and positive. So I'm gonna go negative 0.1, and then 0.1, like that, and just click model. And you can see it starts to randomize all of that. So if we do it uh, one more time, there it is. Uh, that's pretty good. Now I want to uh, 
kind of soften these stones. Right now they're too like pointy. So I'm going to open up the uh, average command and it's under right here under vertex edit mesh average vertices and set this to one and hit apply. That's going to reduce them now. That did it. It's a little small, so we'll uh, do it after we do our next command. So let's leave the window open. So now I need to add subdivisions without actually smoothing it. So if I click the smooth option, it will soften uh, the shapes. I don't want to do that. So I want to just add divisions and that's under edit mesh, add divisions, hit apply. It's going to add divisions like this and I'm going to set this to two. We'll add twice the number of divisions like this. Now I'm going to add a uh, an average to this, and that's going to soften the edges a little bit. See, like that. Okay, good. Now what I want to do is I want to run the transform type in randomize on this. Now it's going to be a little slow. Uh, sometimes when you have a lot of vertices, this this tool is really really slow. So if it does run really slow for you, try using transform instead. So I'm going to try using this right now. Transform, I'm just going to push like that. And you can see our faces are really, uh, the edges are really hard. So we're just going to select this thing, click soften edge and just to, to see what it's going to look like. And that's not looking bad, kind of like it. I think I'm okay with this. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to rotate the individual stones to show like they're um, rotated and maybe move some of them up and down. So um, the next thing we need to do is we need to separate uh, the objects, the stones into separate objects. So I'm going to just click extract like this. You can see now we have a whole bunch of stones in here. There's a lot. But now what we can do is we can center their pivots. Control shift uh, control shift C centers the pivots on each one so you can see they rotate from the center and now I'm going to turn off move I'm going to turn this to rotate and hit up a uh, model and you can see it's going to start to randomly rotate them not bad and the next thing I want to do is I want to move them up and down randomly so I'm going to go into move and I'm going to set this to like 0.2 and 0.2 and Right now you can see our transformations for uh, translate are set to zero. I want to only move them in Y direction. This will move them in all directions, but we can fix that after. So I'm going to click model. You can see it just move them up and down, but also move them in X and uh, Z. So just select X and Z, control select, type in zero, hit enter. So all of the rotation just happened up and down instead now. Now I'm going to combine them back into one object. And the next thing we need to do is we need to uh, subdivide them to make them really smooth. So I'm going to click uh, Poly Smooth, which is this button here. Okay. And we can actually do it one more time. It's going to make it really dense, but that's okay because we're only going to use it for our map projections. Okay. Now we can unhide our target here. I'm going to move it up. Now right now they're still separate objects. See? So what we need to do is we need to merge them. So just click the merge button, which is here. It's also under shift right click. And uh, I think you have to select vertices to do that, but it's also under edit mesh, under vertex, somewhere here. Merge, merge right there. Okay, click merge. So now they're all connected. And I'm going to add a couple of subdivisions. So just click smooth and one more time. And this is much lighter than this. So this object here is 8,000, almost 9,000 faces. And this one is uh, 570,000 faces. So I'm going to bring this down like this. Freeze transformations, freeze transformations on this. And now we need to do UVs on this because we don't want to do them later. So I'm going to open the UV editor and do a quick projection. So go to UV and planar and we'll do a Y axis projection 
with keep image width height ratio turned on. So we'll get this. Now if I zoom in on this, you can see there's a, a line right here. I'm going to double click this line. In my UV toolkit, I'm going to go to cut and sew and click cut. And then if I select uh, these UVs, so uh, you can select a bunch of UV, right click to UV, select a couple UVs, control right click to UV shell like this. If I hold X and middle drag, I can snap it to the grid there. Control shift to uh, hold control, right click to a shell, hold X again, snap this one here, and then move it so they're not touching. Like that. And then hold X, middle uh, click there and drag. And I'm going to click this and scale. Now we can also scale vertically just a little bit. You don't want to scale too much, but a little bit is not going to stretch your UVs too much. It'll be fine. Okay, so our UVs are done. We can close this and that. And now what, what I want to do is I want to project this down. I want to do a, uh, uh, a shrink wrap. Now I always forget the order of the shrink wrap. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to click and make a sphere like this. And then we're going to, I'm going to hide this for now because it actually slows us down. I'm going to make a plane and put the plane here. If I place the plane up here, freeze that. Now I need to know the order of operations and I always forget it. So I'm going to go to the form, open the options for shrink wrap. I'm going to reset this and show you the default settings. What we're going to do is we're going to change this to parallel to axis. We're going to set the Y axis because we're going to go up and down only. And don't do reverse uh, or bi-directional because we're going to do this uh, in a special way. So I'm going to hit a uh, select first the sphere, then the plane and hit apply. And you can see this popped uh, the sphere uh, shrink wrap to the plane. So we're going in the wrong direction. That means we just need to undo and reverse our order of operation. So go from the plane to the sphere. So first plane, then sphere, and then hit apply. Now nothing happened, but if I take the sphere and I move it down, it will snap to the surface. So that's good. We know what to do now. Bring back uh, the stones here, and I'm going to call this source. This will help us later. So select the plane, then select the stones, and hit apply. Okay, now we can take uh, the plane and move it down and it should snap to the surface. Now you don't want to go too low because you will get um, it will go you'll get the corners here will not match. So we want to just go a certain distance like that. That should be good enough. Maybe even a little like that. Clear history and then hide the source. Now if we look at this it's already looking pretty good, but we can do even better than this with the normal map. So I'm going to freeze transformations and now hold spacebar, go to lighting, shading and open transfer maps. Open up. I'm going to clear all of these. I'm going to open up sources here. I'm going to open up my common output and advanced options. Sometimes you need, but not always. I'm going to select this mesh, make sure it's set to one and click under target add selected and that's why I named this target and then this is our source I'm going to click uh, the source and click add selected to the source now um, the search envelope uh, you can test it using envelope but it's going to be a little slow we're just going to um, try with one and see what happens one percent uh, two percent sometimes works pretty well too but we'll just start at one and see what happens now if you uh, are not sure about these settings, click remove map and then click the normal map. So if I click remove map and then click normal map, it's going to ask me where to place it and all that stuff. I'm going to set the resolution to 2048. For this test, if you want a high res map, you can go all the way to uh, 4096. That's the maximum. That's one of the limitations. The other limitation that transfer map has is it doesn't work with UDIM UVs, it only works with single tile UVs. But that's okay for this test. And you have a a sampling quality so I'm going to leave this at medium give us a pretty good result so now once you create normal map you need to tell it where to save it I already have my project set so I'm going to click the folder icon it's going to take me to uh, my project I'm going to go to source images I'm going to call this road underscore 
MM for normal map. And I want to make a PNG for this. You can make a TIFF. Um, that would work fine too. Click save. The default options are good. And I'm going to click uh, bake. This is going to take a little while. Uh, I'm going to just uh, speed this up and I'll come back when it's done. All right, guys, so it finished. So, uh, so to take a look at uh, the result, all you have to do is press six and there it is. If we bring back our source, we can compare the two. And because we use shrink wrap and the surface itself is slightly deformed as well, you can press three to kind of see it nice and smooth. And then you have your uh, rocks right on top. So it's a pretty good alternative to actually having high geometry. You can make normal maps really easy in Maya. Uh, you of course can do it in other applications. You can do this in Mudbox and ZBrush among other things. Um, but if you don't have access to those applications, uh, Maya can do pretty simple projections and uh, they work pretty well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, Please subscribe, leave a comment, and if you do like it, please hit the like button. Thanks, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.